welcome once again to RF transceiver design course. Uh, we were discussing the basic of uh, noise and linearity, nonlinearity in the last module. Uh, so, this module will be focused on the transceiver architecture. So, which is uh, very important as far as this course is concerned. We will try to uh, cover all the architecture conventional and modern which are used in current RF systems. Uh, that we are going to discuss in this module. So, let us start, we will start from the receiver architecture because uh, we have a very small signal that we want to recover and then we will move to the transmitter architecture. So, both transmitter and receiver architecture we will try to cover in this module. So, before going to the uh, receiver architecture, uh, if we try to uh, observe that what are the goal or what are the aim of receiver design. So, I, I just want to give one example. Let us say uh, your signal which is coming is very small signal, it is around minus 90 dBm. If you try to convert that minus 90 dBm of signal, it will be a micro volt. So, uh, our aim is to reconstruct the information out of that very tiny signal. And we have already seen that that weak signal that is coming, it is already corrupted so much and we want to recover the complete information. So, the first aim of any receiver design is a amplification. So, there should be sufficient amplification so that your signal which is coming, which will be amplified enough. Now, uh, if we if I will take the example of ADC, uh, if we just connect directly this ADC to the antenna. So, this ADC if we directly connect to the antenna, it is getting very small signal. And ADC requires very higher input signal so that it can convert into digital because we want to uh, perform the all the modulation demodulation into the digital domain. So, ADC requires very higher input signal, but we are getting very small signal from the uh, atmosphere or any channel we are getting very small signal and we need to do the amplification. So, the first aim is a amplification. Now, here this uh, LNA is kept first because it is going to amplify the signal. Now, why it is called as a LNA? Because it should amplify the signal, but make sure that it will not add much noise into the system. So, it is a low noise amplifier. So, our our LNA should be as it should add very less noise so that there is a degradation in SNR will not be that much. What it means we already have seen in the last module that we should have a, a low noise figure of LNA. And we have also seen the freeze formula. What it says freeze formula that if your first component is adding a less noise and it has a sufficient gain, then subsequent stage noise contribution will be less. So, complete system required a first stage should be amplified. So, in receiver design the basic aim is a amplification and as ADC because we are getting a signal in micro volt, ADC if you see it is LSB or offset or input repair noise, it at least requires the uh, voltage in terms of millivolt. So, it should amplify the sufficient gain. There is also requirement of a high dynamic range. Why it is high dynamic range? Let us say right now I am uh, far from the base station. So, the, if this is my uh, base station, let us say if I will make a cell and if this is my base station and I am at this location at the periphery of the uh, cell. 
then the power that I am receiving is very weak. So, very weak power is coming and that weak will be around minus 90 or minus 100 based on the standard that we are using. So, this weak signal, now this weak signal is going to come to your receiver. So, at that time you, you are getting an amplification. Now, as you are as you are moving towards the base station and if you are somewhere here, very near to the base station, the amount of power that you are receiving is a high. So, let from minus 90 it might reach to the 0 dBm. So, minus 90 to 0 dBm. So, you need around 90 dB of dynamic range. Means your uh, input might range from very small signal to the very large signal compared to the minus 90 dBm. So, this range can also not be captured in the ADC and uh, if LNA is adding the gain then amount of uh, signal amplitude that is coming to ADC will vary. So, that is also one of the issue when we are using a, this architecture where only LNA and ADC will be used. So, there is a challenge here that is a dynamic range. Another thing is this architecture is not uh, help, help us because your sampling rate, your, you are going to give the very high uh, frequency signal omega RF which is very high and you need to have a higher sampling rate in your ADC. So, the, this architecture in this, the first aim is amplification that we understand, but is, is it a sufficient? No, it is not sufficient. So, now we are moving to the second aim of a receiver design. What is the second aim? That is a variable gain. Because there is a high dynamic range, you need to have a variable gain amplifier just after the LNA. So, because of requirement of high dynamic range, as I explained, it might range from 0 to 100 dB, you required a variable gain amplification. And here, ADT generally ADC detection range is limited, for example, 6 dB per bit. And if you go for higher amount of bits, number of bits if you are increasing, in order to consider this entire dynamic range, then your power consumption in receiver will increase. And we always try to optimize the power so that our device will last long in the battery because we are talking about the mobile devices. So, power consumption is increases if there is a number of bits are increased. So, we need to uh, we need to use variable gain amplifier in this so that our uh, th there should be sufficient dynamic range that we can cover. So, this variable gain amplifier should add a low gain or it should add a high gain, low gain when there is a, when we are very far from the, far from the base station and it should give high gain low gain when we are near to the base station, when we are near from the base station and high gain when we are uh, far from the base station. Because uh, if you are far, your, ampli your received, uh, received signal is in minus 90 dBm. So, it should at least add sufficient gain. And why we are adding the low noise amplifier? Because it is, uh, let us say, if, if it is giving a 20 dB of gain, then another 60 or 70 dB gain you can get from the variable gain amplifier. And this can be varied according to the, uh, where, where exactly how much power you are receiving. So, there, there should be some feedback mechanism also after the reception, so that you can able to 
the change the variable gain automatically and that is also called the automatic uh, variable gain amplifier. So, it will automatically tune uh, as you are moving or you are far if your signal is corrupted so much and how much amplification you are getting that is a called a automatic uh, gain amplifier or automatic variable gain amplifier. But what is the challenge here? The implementation of vari variable gain uh, amplifier at RF frequency is challenging because you required that much bandwidth and with the bandwidth uh, you required to change the gain. So, that requirement is sometimes difficult to fulfill. So, in order to do this th there might be variable gain amplifier can be kept after the ADC means or after we uh, do the down conversion. We will also talk about the uh, third gain of the third aim of the receiver. An interfering signal uh, limits the sensitivity. So, if there is a very uh, let us say there is a weak signal, uh, if there is a weak signal and if we have provided very high gain, then there is a possibility that your input power is due to the blockers or interference will be high and that might limit your sensitivity. So, uh, first aim of receiver is to amplification. In order to consider the dynamic range, second aim of receiver is a variable gain. Now, we will move to the third aim that is a down conversion. This is very important as far as RF receiver design is concerned, the down conversion. We, if we try to work at very high frequency and your ADC and all other components required to uh, tune at very high frequency, then your power consumption will go exponentially high. So, in order to reduce the power consumption, we always try to work do the digital demodulation or uh, baseband uh, all the baseband we will try to work at a low frequency. So, baseband frequency are lower compared to the RF frequency and the, all the baseband uh, processing we will do at a lower frequency so that our power consumption will not increase and we, we can do the efficient demodulation in the baseband. So, always the part which is a front end, so this is a called a front end where, where you employ the down conversion up to the down converting of the signal and let us say up to the ADC, it will be mostly called as a front end and the moment you have converted the data say, to the digital, then it will be called as a baseband. So, all the RF receiver consists of RF front end. and it is also called IF back end. We will also discuss about the IF frequency and all in the upcoming slides. So, here it reduces the power consumption and uh, if we are transmitting then it is up conversion and if we are receiving then it is a down conversion. So, we need to up, either up convert the signal or down convert the signal according to it is a transmitter and receiver. So, here it is a down conversion. So, let us say if your frequency is a 2.4 gigahertz, your carrier frequency omega c is 2.4 gigahertz and then you are down converting to the omega i f which is a 100 megahertz. So, you required a sufficient LO signal that is in this case omega LO is around 2.4. 3 gigahertz. So, it can be how the down conversion we will do? This is called a multiplier and this multiplier or mixer, it is called a mixer or multiplier. This, this is a uh, widely known as a RF mixer which will down convert the signal from the high frequency to the low frequency when LO is uh, applied. So, it is, it is a 3 port device, it has a RF input 
it has a LO input and IF that is a intermediate frequency which is a output. So, it is a two input and one output. So, what mixer generally what mixers do? Mixer translate the frequency. When you multiply two signals which is omega 1 and omega 2 or omega RF and omega LO, you will get a two product omega RF minus omega LO and omega RF plus omega LO. So, the for down conversion it is omega RF minus omega LO. So, the basic aim of the receiver is a mixer is uh, translate the frequency. But however, this mixers might add much noise. So, it is a noisy, uh, the noise figure will be range of 10 dB or if you can also lower down to 5 or 6 dB. But this is going to add more noise compared to the uh, LNA and that is why we uh, most of the RF transceiver employs the low noise amplifier before the mixer in order to reduce the uh, implication of the noise of mixer. So, as per the freeze formula, we all, all know that first component dominate the noise. So, that is why the first component we try to use a low noise amplifier. And in all the popular architecture, LNA followed by a mixer architecture and it is a popular. It is uh, almost everywhere in our communication devices, we are using low noise amplifier followed by a mixer architecture. So, the, we have discussed the first aim is amplification, first aim of receiver, second aim of receiver is a uh, dynamic in order to mitigate the dynamic range that is a variable gain amplification, third is a down conversion. So, here after the down conversion you can use a variable gain amplifier and at IF frequency it is easy to use variable gain amplifier. In certain application, there is a two uh, means uh, one LNA can also add the, it is a two means you can add a switch. LNA can be work at high gain mode and low gain mode. So, you can use LNA at high gain mode or low gain mode or after LNA some radio frequency amplifier will be has been added and it will provide either high gain and low, low gain based on the switching. So, but it is not that much variable gain at RF frequency we try to use, but we can use either uh, high gain or low gain mode in the low noise amplifier and mostly variable gain amplification or uh, automatic variable gain try to implement either e after the IF conversion or in the baseband. So, uh, this uh, or in the back end we try to bring it to the digital level. So, this is a th uh, three, three aim of a receiver design. Now, we will move to the fourth aim that is a filtering. So, what is the fourth aim of receiver design is the filtering. Why we need a filtering? Because we already seen the non-linearity in the last module and if there is a very high uh, amplitude blockers or interferers or jammers, it can have a different name. It can be written as a blockers or interferers or jammers. If it is coming in between, then it will desensitize your entire receiver. So, you need to have a filtering so, so that unwanted signal will be filtered out. So, the first component in receiver uh, basic uh, receiver design is a filter and it can remove the out of band blocker. And compression, let we already have seen that if there is a more compression, it will uh, reduce the SNR. Let us say if there is a very high frequency blockers and that this is a desired signal. When, when you down convert, there is a desired signal and some unwanted uh, signal is coming. And because it is unwanted, we will we can consider it a noise. So, your SNR, output SNR is degraded. 
So, here your SNR is reduced because of the unwanted blockers. Another is it required a sharp filter to suppress the unwanted and uh, unwanted signal or interferers or blockers. And they, they, I already told that in standard, it is defined that what amount of blocking you want to add in the receiver. So, it is already defined in the standard that how much 60 dB or how much in band and out of band blockers that we want to uh, reject. So, what are the effect of blockers interfere or jammers? Due to compression, the gain of the signal reduce, we already have seen. Noise figure of the receiver, as I explained, noise figure of the receiver increases and because of intermodulation, it will lower down the sensitivity of receiver. Because your noise is increasing, your sensitivity will lower and if your noise is less, your sensitivity is improved. So, these are the four aim of any uh, receiver design that you should keep in your mind before going to any architecture. The first is a amplification, second is a, a variable gain, third is a down conversion and fourth is a filtering. If you are going for the any architecture or any uh, receiver design topology, then you should keep this four aim in your mind. So, if this is there, you can also uh, invent some novel architecture that you uh, in future you can do. Now, let us move to the further topic. So, uh, I already told the same thing. So, this is much better it is uh, drawn here. So, in the transmitter, transceiver architecture, in transmitter there is a power amplifier, band pass filter and the signal will be transmitted. Now, in transmitter, we do not need to worry about the interferer so much because uh, there is a, if we, we can directly employ the bandpass filter and transmit the signal. However, in receiver, you have a, you are going to receive too many unwanted signal and that you need to have, you need to consider while designing the receiver. So, this is a requirement of the filter at the transmitter also and at the receiver also. And in transmitter, you are removing the adjacent channel power and in receiver you are uh, removing the uh, adjacent channel or adjacent band which you want to uh, subtract. So, filter is important as I have told in the uh, final aim of receiver. So, there are two kinds of filters are possible. One is a channel selection and another is a band selection. So, uh, here what I, I just want to differentiate here what is a channel and what is a band. So, let us say you are working at a 900 megahertz and 900 megahertz there are a different channels. E each channel for example has a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. So, it will employ the different channels. And there is a, a band which 900 megahertz is a called a band and inside the 900 megahertz there is a channel. Now, if you want to down convert, if you want to employ the filter which will uh, directly uh, down convert the complete channel means it will filter out the other channel, then your requirement of Q is very high because your center frequency let us say omega naught and your Q is inversely proportional to the bandwidth. So, if your omega naught frequency is 900 megahertz and if your delta omega is 200, then you, you require the Q which is in terms of very high value in, in terms of uh, in, in terms of mega and that value is very difficult, that kind of filter is very difficult to design. So, however, if you can consider the complete band of let us say 20 megahertz or uh, 200 megahertz band and 
here it is a 200 kilohertz. So, this Q requirement will reduce and that kind of filter you can easily design. That is why we initially try to select the band and then later on stage we will go for the channel selection. So, always there is a band selection will be done first and channel selection will be done later on. So, band selection is followed by the channel selection and that we should take it into the further stage of the down conversion. So, this is very important because of very high Q requirement, we are not uh, using the channel. But let us say if uh, for certain application, your bandwidth is very high and you do not have the, that many channel in the band, you can also select the band, but make uh, we need to make sure that the requirement of Q is not going very high. So, in this case, uh, mostly because our RF bands are crowded, it has a different band, has a different application, we have already seen in the first class. And because we want to recover the signal very small channel out of that, first we will try to select the band and then we will go for the channel selection. We will also uh, have a, uh, we all already dis uh, discuss about the full duplex in the, while we discuss about the basics of wireless communication. Full duplex, what it means? That you are going to send a, uh, uh, signal means transmit signal and receive signal. Uh, transmit frequency is a different and receive frequency is a different and at the same time you can transmit and receive if you employ the frequency division multiplexing. So, uh, here for uh, duplexing it is called full duplex, uh, full duplexing where you employ a duplexer how the duplexer performance looks like? There is a transmitter band. So, this blue color here is a transmitter band. So, for receiver band, it has a sufficient rejection. So, you can see this 55 dB rejection it has. So, receiver signal will not come here and the only transmitter signal will be transmitted. However, when you see from the receiver side, it has a uh, it will receive the signal uh, and which is at little bit higher frequency compared to the transmitted frequency and it, it can also reject around 55 dB of the signal to the uh, from the transmitter. So, this is how the uh, DC uh, full duplexing will happen and this duplexer is widely used in order to switch the this two frequency. So, if there is a 55 dB of attenuation still, let us say if you are transmitting the power of 1 watt, you have employed the duplexer, still this 30 dBm, if you reduce by 55, then that much power is going back to the low noise amplifier. So, we need to consider this is also called the inside the band itself, uh, you are getting the uh, interference. So, uh, there is no interference which is coming from other place, but from the transmitter itself, you are getting the interference. And that should be, uh, we, we need to, that is why employ the filter here also, which will, uh, we, we also need to employ the filter if it is a very high power, which is a going back to the receiver. So, there are two kinds of blocker. One is called in band blockers and another is called a out of band blockers. So, uh, in this uh, there is a GSM standard example is considered. So, if your transmitting frequency is a 890 uh, to 915 megahertz, we generally uh, Consider the transmitter frequency lower compared to receiver because the power consumption will reduce if we have a lower frequency compared to the because power amplifier is a power hungry component. 
So, 890 megahertz to 915 megahertz is a transmitter frequency and 935 to 960 megahertz is a receiver frequency and this is a uh, bandwidth of the channel. So, if this is a desired channel that is minus 99 dBm, then you, you will have a little bit high that is uh, minus 43. So, this, this will be minus 40. 3 dBm. So, at if it is 900 megahertz, at 600 kilohertz, just at 600 kilohertz, you should able to block the uh, in channel in band blocker which is a minus 43 dBm. So, if there is a power of minus 43 dBm, your receiver should have a sufficient linearity so that it will block and while discussing the non-linearity, I have already given an example of that how much IIP3 is required for your low noise amplifier so that it can block the blocker. And you should uh, also uh, go for high. So, at 16, 1600 kilohertz, again it is increased. This is a requirement that we have. at 300 uh, kilohertz or 3 megahertz it is minus 23 dB and this is called in band because that is inside the band in band blockers and then there is a out of band blockers uh, this is a, at 20 megahertz uh, another band which is out of band and it should reject the 0 dBm. So, this is a minus 99 dBm and it should reject the 0 dBm of blocker. So, this is what is defined in the standard that what is the range of power for blocking the in band blockers and how much power level you, that you need to suppress and out of band blockers. So, your receiver should have a sufficient linearity so that it can uh, mitigate the effect of the in band blockers as well as out of band blockers and if it is required you should add the filters in order to remove the in band blockers and out of band blockers. Now, we will uh, go to the basic uh, receiver architecture that is a heterodyne receiver. In the heterodyne receiver, uh, if this is a your input frequency that is omega i n and if we draw the both positive and negative this is a plus omega in and this is a minus omega in and when you apply the omega lo that is uh, here it is uh, represented as a sharp delta frequency omega lo then if you are adding a mixer and after that if there is a filter because mixer is going to give you omega rf plus omega lo and omega rf minus omega lo. So, you need to filter out the uh, higher frequency component that is omega rf plus omega lo. So, if we uh, try to see in terms of the spectrum uh, what it will get it is a uh, plus omega in minus omega lo plus omega in plus omega lo uh, at the other side minus omega in uh, minus omega lo and minus omega in plus omega lo. So, I can also write this minus omega in plus omega lo and minus omega lo minus omega in because it is a negative side. So, if if let us say this is a 2.3 gigahertz omega in and if omega lo is a 2 point uh, if this is 2.4 because there is a higher uh, RF if it is 2.3 gigahertz. So, you will have a signal let us say at 100 megahertz minus 100 megahertz and the addition of this uh, around 4.7 gigahertz and minus 4.7 gigahertz. So, 
you your signal which is down converted in basic heterodyne will have a four components uh, which are uh, omega omega rf minus omega lo and plus or minus omega rf minus omega lo and plus or minus omega rf plus omega lo so uh, this is a heterodyne receiver we will discuss about heterodyne receiver much in detail in the next class uh, and all other receiver architecture we will discuss in the next class thank you